welcome to this video. Today we're going to do soft and hard body combining. So we're going to use new Cinema 40 S26 clot system and old bullet system together to achieve something like this. So the scene with the chair was something that I tried and I was starting putting tags on everything. So that's how it happened. I'm going to show you how to as well import stuff from bridge into Cinema 40 S26, which turned out to be a problem, but hopefully we'll get some updates soon. So no more talking. So today's video is very exciting and packed with all the little tips. So we're going to start by importing bridge assets. And in current version, if I import this wooden chair, for example, I will export successfully. However, in Cinema 4D S26, there is a message that failed to create redshift material. I found a workaround. Uh, you change your render to physical. And now with the render set to physical, you can import chair. No error. This old wood and also the boulder. We export all these to Cinema 4D and now we have them as a physical materials. So I can switch in my settings back to Redshift Renderer. I can highlight all these physical materials. Go to Redshift Material Tools, Convert All Materials and it will create Redshift counterpart. So I can now delete the physical materials and I can name so this is going to be our chair, this is going to be wood, and this is going to be rock. It's very simple to understand. And now I'm going to apply these redshift materials, chair, wood, and the rock. Uh, I'm going to make these a uh, little smaller. So I'm just going to highlight the rock, make it smaller, push it to the side, highlight the wood, press T, scale it down and push it to the side. Now. Let's optimize it because we're going to be simulating uh, interacting objects and we can simplify the mesh. And with the new S26, there is a great tool for that. So it's a trusty remesh. We can apply remesh to the chair. So make the chair child of the remesh and it will recalculate and make a quad, nice quad mesh. So I can go all the way to 25%. It will recalculate it again and make very simple mesh for us to simulate. And we will do the same for other objects. So I'm just going to go highlight all these, press Alt, and Remesh gets applied to our other two objects. And we can go all the way to maybe 50 for the wood and 50 for the rock. So I'm just going to press C on all of those and commit those, drag them out of their nulls and just delete those nulls. Now we optimize our scene. So I, <laughs> I think we're going to save it now here. The next thing we want to do, I'm just going to push the chair slightly up. We're going to bring in sphere, but this sphere, uh, it's going to be very small and we're going to place a tractor in it. So if I go forces, you know, simulate forces, attractor. So now that attractors is inside that sphere because it's in the center of the whole scene. So I can make it a child of that sphere, make that sphere. You know, if I double click this second dot here, just one, two, so make it red. It won't be visible in the renderer. I'm going to change the attractor to strength uh, one and uh, speed limit will be 15 centimeters because if I just played now, it would just suck the black hole out of this. I'm going to bring in sphere, another one, and just make it smaller again to so 15 and segments 20 and change it to icosahedron, which will be better because it's even mesh for calculating again. So this sphere, I'm just going to br bring, I'm just going to put it into cloner and change cloner mode to radial in a radial arrangement around the sphere. I can apply to our cloner simulation tag cloth. So first thing you're going to notice is when you press play, the gravity is affecting the scene, the fears fall out, but then we press control D. We go to our project settings and hit the simulation tab, go to gravity, press zero. So now when I press play the spheres, they are only affected by that attractor. So rotating around, they already kind of soft. And the reason why I place um, attractor into that sphere is because sometimes when you introduce a lot of objects and for example that chair would hit the attractor it would start trembling and it would start creating weird behavior so what i tend to do um and you don't have to do that but i i like to put the attractor into a little sphere and just put the 
simulation tag collider on it. So the spheres will collide with it this way. They won't reach the attractor itself. They just want to get inside there, but they can't because there is this collider tag. So I'm just going to call it attractor shell and we have our cloner. So I just call it spheres. And now we want to do the same thing for the chair and the other objects in the scene. So uh, what I need to do, I need to bring in bullet tags and set them to rigid body. So now I'm essentially combining the bullet tags and simulation tags together. So rigid body and same thing happens. So again, control D, go to project settings, but this time hit the bullet tab and again, set the gravity to zero. If I do that, they will starting, they start to be attracted by the, by the attractor, but they don't collide with the spheres. That's one thing we have going. It's really cool. And they also starting to creating that weird behavior when you see uh, the chair is kind of rotating around this attractor position and it can get sometimes weird. So we're going to apply to our attractor shell collider body. So attractor shell has collider body and collider tag as well. It's repelling all of these objects and the attractors inside of that sphere. But we still have a problem with the spheres. So I'm just going to apply to our objects. So all these three objects go to tags, bullet tag. We're going to apply simulation tag, collider. And now we should have everything colliding with each other nothing intersecting and competing to get to the attractor. So this is what we want. And now it's just about us resizing the scene and repositioning the object. So uh, we, we get a nice collision effect. So I would uh, recommend to maybe increase, you know, the radius of the cloner and maybe put the rock a little bit down, take the wood, rotate it, bring it here let's make sure nothing's intersecting in the scene great the other thing you can do you can put on some objects you can just put let, let's say this view wood is going to have animation tag vibrate and we're going to set rotation not on a x but we're going to set rotation on y and we're going to set frequency to 0 0.5 so 100 degrees amplitude and it's going to start rotating so we're going to get even more movement on top of that can do the same for the chair can put the vibrate on a chair we're going to change the rotation this time on x axis so 150 degrees on x so it starts moving and they will still react with the attractor but we'll get more movement more interesting interactions now the boot is squashing the soft body, which is exactly what we want. The, the other thing, uh, how we can affect the scene is we can bring forces and bring turbulence and that will tie it all together. So I'll set the strength only to one centimeter and a scale to thousand. And so from this point onwards, it's basically about dialing the forces right and putting objects in such a manner that you find enjoyable. And this is end of it. Uh, I, I think I put just some uh, one of my material from my new material pack. Then I put the area light on the top and cache the whole animation, uh, starting with rigid bodies and then cache the soft bodies on top of that. I think I've <laughs> uh, introduced the fabrics as well, uh, but that's what crashed the whole C4D. So I think that was a mistake. Ah. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and thank you very much for watching and subscribing to my channel and I'm thinking to start Patreon soon with a little bit more advanced uh, tutorials uh, with X particles and redshift uh, texturing. So let me know what you think and let me know if you enjoy the new cloth simulation from Cinema 4D S26 and if you already combine this with the bullet system. So thank you very much and see you in the next one.